All right, for points of inflection, we need to realize that whenever f double prime is positive, this means that f prime is increasing and f is concave up. When f double prime is negative, this means f prime is decreasing and f is concave down. Points of inflection is when f double prime changes signs, which is when f prime changes directions which means you're looking for the maxes and the mins of f prime because this is f prime so here 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 and here which means there are four points of inflection which is d concave up again concave up means f prime is increasing so f prime is increasing from negative 10 to negative 3 and from 3 to 10 which is choice D, negative 10 to negative 3, and 3 to 10. Relative minimum. Okay, so this is talking about <coughs> F prime needs to equal 0 and change Ordini and change from negative to positive. So we think about making our number line here, our critical numbers would be 0, 4 and 8 because those are the zeros of f prime and we have positive above below so negative negative and then above which means that f increases decreases increases so our minimum happens at 8 again you can just look here and see where do I cross from below to above below to above negative to positive, which means down to up. So it's at x equals 8, which is choice E. Number 4, we're matching this graph. Make sure you pay attention. It says this is f. We're looking for its derivative. Now, something to notice. Here are your critical values of the function but you need to match up with your zeros. So it's either going to be C or D. For one thing, this is something cubed, so you're looking for something squared. So you're looking for a parabola. So automatically you can cross off all these choices. Now, this is a positive, so you know it's going to be positive. So this one's kind of easy. But notice, two maxes or mins, so you need two zeros. This function is increasing, so you need it to be positive. And then the function is decreasing, so you need to be negative. And then increasing, so positive. So since we have increasing, decreasing, increasing, we needed positive, negative, positive. Acceleration. Acceleration, this is the graph of velocity. We know P, V, A. You take the derivative, you go down. So acceleration is derivative of velocity, which would be the slope. Okay, so where's the slope positive? From, let's see, from zero all the way to two. And then you need to stop because the slope here, the derivative here does not exist because of the sharp turn. So that's why it's zero to two and then two to four, which is choice C. The acceleration of 2 to 4, again, we're looking for slope. So the slope here, we went up 1 over 2, so the slope is 1 half, which is 0 0.5, and that's choice C. Number 7, what is the velocity? Okay, you are pretty good, PVA. And in position, we take the derivative. So the velocity is 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. Now, this says when t is 0, if people kept on setting this equal to 0, that's what we normally do, but this asks us a different question. It says, what is the velocity when the time is zero? So you literally plug in zero for time, and you get nine, which is choice D. Okay, number eight, take the derivative, which would be the velocity. You get 3t squared minus 9t minus 12. Again, this does not ask us to set it equal to zero. It just says, what is the velocity when the time is five? So plug in 5. You can go to your calculator to do so. 
you can say 3 times 5 squared minus 9 times 5 minus 12 equals 18, which is choice C. Number 9, when is the particle moving to the left? Okay, anytime you're talking about left or right, look at the velocity. The velocity negative means left, velocity positive means right. <clears throat> so this is the whole first derivative test. Find the velocity, set it equal to zero to get your critical numbers. Okay, so left keyword, looking for where velocity is negative. So we need the velocity, which we get by taking the derivative, 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. We set it equal to zero. GCF here makes life easier. 3t squared minus 4t plus 3. Now we need two things that multiply to give me 3, so that's 3 and 1. But we need a negative force. So they're both negative. Now, for those of you who are bad at factoring, you can always go to y equals and type in this equation, 3x squared, whoops, x squared, minus 12x plus 9, graph. 1 and 3 are the zeros, okay? So that means if you see the zeros here, are 1 and 3, your factors are t minus 1 and t minus 3. Okay, and you make your number line. If you don't know for sure what they are, you need to boost second, trace, number two. Use the right arrow to get on either side of the zero. So on one side and then on the other. Make sure these are focused, pointing to each other. Push enter. You get one. Again, second, trace, number two, zero. Arrow around. This time you need to be below first, so the arrow will point to the right. And then above. And then enter you get 3. Notice the graph tells you the sign as well. So we have 1, 3, above, so positive, below, so negative, above, so positive. So you can do your test points into the factors. If I put a 0 in here, I get negative times negative, so positive. If I put a 2, I get positive times negative, so negative. Put a 4, I get positives. So this function is going to the right or increasing and then decreasing or to the left and then increasing or to the right. So when is the particle moving to the left? From 1 to 3. It's the interval from 1 to 3 which is choice C. Okay, 10 our long problem. Find the velocity. Easy. Take the derivative. So we get 6t squared minus 19.5 times 2 would give us 39t plus 45. Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity because we have PVA. So we get 12t minus 39. When is the particle at rest? At rest, your car, think about setting it, your speed is 0. So set your velocity equal to 0. 6t squared minus 39t plus 45 equals 0. The greatest common factor is 3. If you factor out a 3, you're left with 2t squared minus 13t plus 45 15 times equals 0. So 3, the only way to get 2t squared is 2t times t. 15, we have 3 times 5. So 5 and 3. This is going to give us 10 and the 3 is the 13. They're both negative. So we get time equals 2 thirds and time equals 5. Again, if you have trouble, put this in y equals 6x squared minus 39x plus 45. Oops. Graph. To get the zeros, you do second trace number two. Use this till you see the little blinking cursor. Enter. Go below. Enter. Enter. You get 1.5, which was, oops, I wrote down two thirds. I meant three halves. And then you do second trace number two 
cursor all the way around till you get below enter above enter enter five the signs tell you which is what we're going to need for this guy we have zero three halves and five we have positive negative positive Okay, so continue the question. At rest are the two times at here. Furthest to the left. Furthest to the left. This is the same as asking a minimum. We need one location, not an interval. Okay, furthest to the left is the same as asking what's the minimum. The minimum would be at time equals five seconds. Okay, because this means right, left, right. Now, what is the position? Don't make this more challenging than it is. Position, well, where's the position? Oh, look up here. It says position is this guy. So, I'm going to plug 5 into that equation. So, we're looking for x of 5. So, go back to your calculator and type in 2 times 5 cubed minus 19.5 times 5 squared plus 45 times 5 we get negative 12.5 meters when is the particle experiencing minimum velocity anytime you take a min or a max of anything you look at that function's derivative. Whatever that function is, that's just a concept. So in this case, we're talking about velocity. So you look at V prime, which is acceleration, 12t minus 39. You do the first derivative test, which means set it equal to zero. You get t equals 39 over 12. So if I plug in 39 over 12 on a number line, it's a, we get one, make this negative and positive so velocity is decreasing and then increasing which means this is a minimum at 39 toss or you can simplify it <laughs> when is the speed negative never tricky tricky remember speed is the absolute value of the velocity velocity can be negative speed cannot slowing down slowing down remember s d means signs differ so you compare the two number lines side by side if you want to you can redraw them make sure you know where they go in order 0 3 halves which is like 1.5 and 5 and then we have 39 twelfths which is a little bit over 3 so that would be in between here and we have positive negative positive then we have negative and then positive so slowing down was where they overlap where the signs are different so that would be from 0 to 3 halves and from 39 twelfths to 5 the reason if I justify all you have to say is because velocity and acceleration have different signs that's all find the total distance okay total distance first four seconds well on a number line number line is given by position so you're going to take the time values the start time would be zero the end time would be four and then you also need to figure out where does velocity equal zero. Those are your turning points. Now in this case, velocity equals zero at three halves and five, but we only care about three halves because it's in between zero and four. You're plugging this into original equation. So if I go over here, you can type it into your screen. That might help. Two x cubed minus nineteen point five x squared plus 45x a second table set if you change this to ask and then you go to your table you can type in whatever you wish if I type in 0 it tells me 0 
I'll type in 3 halves. It tells me 30.375. I type in 4. I have negative 4. So now the difference here would be 30.375. And the difference here, how many spaces on a number line did I move? Well, 30.375 plus the 4, so 34.375. I add these together. So 30.375 plus 34.375, and I get 64.75 meters. Okay, again, I would say go practice, practice matching. F and F prime. Click on the useful websites link. Because you need to know how to match the derivative with its with its function. Actually, I can go ahead and show you how to do some of those. Let's look at them. <laughs> okay. This here is a parabola, which means we're looking for a line, so it's kind of process elimination. But notice we have a maximum here that matches with the zero here. The derivative crosses from positive to negative, which means maximum. This is always increasing, which means the derivative is always positive. Also, notice this guy was, is increasing. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, this is decreasing and then increasing, which means concave down, concave up. All right, this... These are very close to one another. Um, if you notice where we kind of flatten out right here, it needs to match with that as a point of inflection, right? It needs to match with that maximum. And this point of inflection here needs to match with that maximum. Let's try another set. All right. So this one kind of looks like the odd man out, right? Notice decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So we need negative, and then positive, negative. So below, above, above, below. This is increasing, decreasing, increasing. So I need positive, negative, positive. So positive, negative, positive. Or this positive, negative, positive. So it's one of these two. Now my max is at zero, my min is at two, which means I need to have zeros at zero and two. The maxes the mins need to line up with the zeros here. So here's your max and min, which need to line up with these zeros. And also this one helps because look, this is overall decreasing, which means you need to have a negative, this would be concave down. This would be like negative x cubed, the derivative would be negative 3x squared. Okay, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So you need below, above, below. You have your max, your min and your max your min and your max. Remember min, the derivative crosses from negative to positive. Max, derivative from positive to negative. Let's load one more. Always increasing or constant, which means your derivative is always positive or zero. Okay, this is a parabola, which is one of the lines. Now, the maximum is in between negative 1 and negative 2, so you need to be crossing the x-axis in between negative 1 and 2. This one's maximum is at x equals 0, so at x equals 0, crossing the x-axis. This is decreasing, increasing, decreasing, so we need negative, positive, negative. Your minimum is at negative 2, your maximum is at 2. Okay, good luck to you guys. Um, study, study, study. I'll see you tomorrow.